Hey, what is going on guys? Joe here from JPRC and in today's video, we're gonna unbox this 1512 size 2650 kV sunset motor from Castle Creations and also we will be talking about the science of these brushless motors and hope that we can learn something new today. Alright guys, welcome back for another episode on the JPRC channel here. Now before I get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Castle Creations for sending me this awesome and latest top of the line 1A scale sensor motor system for my trophy truck project. The GS 2.0 trophy truck project in particular that you're gonna see in upcoming videos. Now of course, Castle has been around for 20 years now, providing some of the highest quality ESCs and motors for many of the big name vehicles out there, such as the XO1, the Traxxas EVO, and many of the Axial vehicles. Even though the box right here says it's for 1A scale vehicle and 110 scale four wheel drive short course trucks, and in fact, a lot of guys are running the non sensor version in the Traxxas Slash 4x4 for some high top speed runs, but it's not gonna stop you to put this in a 110 scale rock racer such as just the Axial Yeti. And in fact, this motor here is actually gonna be perfect for rock racing given the sensor architecture because a sensor system, as you all know, is gonna give you the maximum motor control at very low end speed and also give you a very smooth operation pretty much at any spectrum of the speed. Now, before we crack open the box right here, let's take a look at some of the specs on the side. Uh, 60,000 RPM, it's got a five millimeter shaft, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit in detail and reason why you want a five millimeter shaft on this kind of a high output motor. It will also support up to 4S LiPo. It also has two sets of mounting screws. You can use M3 or M5, I mean M3 or M4 size screws for different application. It will drop into an Axial Yeti slash 4x4 perfectly with no problem. All right, let's crack the box open. And in here, you can find some uh, motor lead connection. If you're connecting to a Castle ESC, you don't need these uh, connectors here because it's already pre-soldered. You will also see the sensor cable here, which we're gonna talk about later in a little bit in detail. So let's put it over here. And inside, you also see the motor itself. And since I don't have the same version for the non-sensor, uh, of the same motor, I'm just gonna put it on the scale here and see how much it weights. So to be exact, it's 13.4 ohms. So if you guys have the non-sensor version of this motor, let me know in the comment how much it weighs and what is the weight different. One of the first thing you notice, the motor lead is already beautifully pre-soldered. It's got plenty of length for you to route to the ESC depending on your location. And these bullet connector here are super sized. I think they're like six millimeter. It's very huge. That's gonna handle the high power load on it. Now, obviously the main difference here is the sensor port right here, which we're gonna get into a little bit when we talk about the working principle of a brushless motor. Let's put the motor right here. And this is the ESC I'm gonna be uh, hooking it up to. Uh, this is the second version of the same ESC that I have. The first one I have is in my 1A scale Typhoon. If you haven't seen that motor running in my uh, Typhoon running video, I'll make sure to check it out. I'll link it in this video. It's pretty insane. So let's crack this open real quick. Now this one has been on the market for some time and it's got a lot of programming features into it. It's got some extra cable connectors and uh, shrink wrap right there. Basic manual. And here you have the ESC inside. And of course you have your choice of soldering whatever battery connector on it. And you got your manual in here. Got the quick start guy, some decals, and programming card information. So let's go back to talk about the motor. Now, one of the reasons why you know it comes with a five millimeter shaft right here is because of obviously the tremendous amount of power this thing outputs. And for a second, if you have a generic motor like this, obviously it's missing the motor shaft. This is a 540 generic motor. And when I was running this in my hobby king that it came with, a piece of rock got into between the piggin gear and the spur gear. Uh, it actually broke the motor shaft off. And this is another reason why you want a five millimeter shaft. And of course, this is gonna be a much higher quality motor than a generic motor like this. Now, some of you may be asking, what is the difference between a censored and a non-censored motor? 
Now, if you have been driving any brushless centerless motor, you may notice that like when you're coming from a dead stop, the first quarter of the throttle, your vehicle will be making a jittering effect, like moving back and forth a little bit before it actually kicks into motion. And once it's moving and it will go pretty smooth, but when it goes slow down again, you will notice that the car will start jittering again. And that is because a native inherent effect of a non-sensored motor called cogging. To understand why cogging happens in a brushless motor, we have to go back and understand the basic principle of a brushless motor. And for that, we're gonna need a piece of paper. All right, so let's try to illustrate the inner working of a brushless motor. And let's say this is our motor right here. All right, so we have the motor cross section here. Let's pretend this is the same motor right here. And inside the outer ring, it's called a stator. And in around there, they have these electric coil in there called a stator. And this is the coil up here. Let's say this is the A and A bar. And it has a magnetic hole when you put current through the same coil. So this is really the same coil in a single wire. And when you put electromagnetic through it, it generates electromagnetic force called EMF. And if you put a motor like this with a magnet inside a motor shaft in the middle of it, so when you energize the pole right here, it's gonna generate magnetic field and it's gonna attract the motor to this position if it's in anywhere in there. So how do we get the motor to rotate, right? Well, very simple. Add another pair right here. Let's say this is the B coil in the opposite position. And then when you release energy from this pair and fire up the next round, it's gonna move the motor shaft this way. Very simple. And so on. If you have this third pair here, you got the C and C bar. So once you have all of these three phases right here, when you synchronize the firing of the electromagnetic, it's gonna generate electromagnetic force and it's gonna attract the rotor to rotate this way and that's how you generate torque. So obviously that's all good and said, but however, when the motor is in a desktop, the cogging effect happens right here exactly because the ESC, the speed control, has no idea what a motor shaft is, so how does it know which side to fire it first, right? Well, it doesn't really know, it does it by a way of guessing. So when, you know, there's a saying that you know, when in doubt, throttle it out, and that's exactly what it's doing. It will fire up all three of the, um, the faces right here, both A, B, C, in a very close sequence. When the rotor travels through one of the coil, it generates a back EMF, and that is being fed back through the motor lead, back to the ESC. So with some complicated math, it can calculate estimate the uh, motor position relatively quickly and once it picked up a signal and then it's gonna know its position and then it will synchronize the firing event so that the motor will go in the direction that you want it to go. However, before it really realizes where the motor position is because let's say it's on this position, right? If you fire up this one, it could travel this way or this way and that is the native inherent effect of cogging because the motor has no idea which which phase it was in so that's why you get the initial cogging effect and that's why it's having the jittering effect so how do we solve that problem well pretty simple we just go ahead and put a sensor let's say we put a sensor at the end of the ball cap like right here we put a sensor right here called a hall sensor and it's gonna read out the exact position of the motor inside or the rotor to be exact so you notice the ESC will always know the exact position of the rotor so it can fire up exactly in the right sequence from the get-go so that's how you get the really really smooth operation of a brushless sensor motor and of course with the added equipment in here it's gonna add calls it's gonna add a another device that could fail over time uh, but what Castle has done creatively is different they have what's called a smart sense so when the motor is in a um, dead stop position, it uses the sensor to detect the position of the pole and when it starts the motor, once it starts spinning, it will rely on the back EMF because remember what we said earlier, when a motor is, when the rotor is moving, 
it generates an electromagnetic force and it's being fed back through the motor lead. So by subtracting the force coming back from the lead uh, by the input force, it can easily calculate uh, how much force is being fed back. And then it can guesstimate where the motor is. This way it turns off the sensor, save on power and make it more efficient and durable. When it comes to a slow operation, it will kick in, turn on the sensor again and that's why you can get the smooth operation of a motor. And this is also another reason why in a centered motor system, you have to follow exactly how the ABC wire are censored. Uh, unlike a non-censored version where if your motor is not going the right um, rotation direction, you can easily swap one of the two wires and it will go into the other direction. But with a censored motor, you just cannot do that because the censored has to rely on accurate timing of these things so that you can actually start the motor in the right direction. And also there's one thing that you cannot help to notice. With this kind of a brushless motor, there's no physical contact or moving part between a rotor and the outer sphere such as a brush in a brush motor. And that's why a brushless motor is much more efficient because it generates a lot less heat and it's gonna have a lot more power because there's no physical contact between the rotor and the stator. Now of course, this is my oversimplified operation of a brushless motor there are many different kinds of motor out there so that's it guys i hope you guys find a video helpful i hope you learned something new and i hope didn't bore you to death with this video on my hand drawing here um, if you guys like the video go ahead and give a thumbs up and of course i would highly encourage you to subscribe if you're new to the channel and with that said i'm gonna go off and start working on my trophy truck project and i will see you guys in the next video later guys